So yes, hello, yeah, hello and welcome back to part two of episode 10 of Film Focus, our okay. weekly independent film show, with me, Fred Black, and Anthony Squire. There we go, right, uh, we've got two more films for you this week and five more trailers, so we'll get started with our first diabolical film called uh, Trespass. Trespass. Now, <laughs> Joel yeah. Schumacher, he directed Joel Schumacher film. directed it. Like We've Joel, got Nicolas Cage and learn, Nicole Kidman. Joel, didn't you learn anything from Batman Forever? Well, Batman Forever was a terrible film. Yeah, exactly. So it learned where not how not to do things. I mean, come on, no, Nicole, he obviously didn't. He obviously Nicole didn't. Kidman, you worked with him on Batman Forever, didn't you learn anything? What is she? Is she who is she in Batman Forever? Oh, she plays the doctor. Um, the, no, not doctor, the psychiatrist. A psychiatrist trying uh, a psychiatrist psychiatrist trying to analyse Batman. That's going to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, I'll give Joel Schumacher credit for Batman and Robin. He just went. He knew he messed up on Batman Forever, so he just went full out. On yeah, but he didn't know he messed up on this one, obviously, because he was trying to play it fucking serious all the time. In and short, a a couple. Film. Yeah. Nicholas Cage and Nicole Kidman are held hostage in their house. Yeah. Or they're held for ransom, really. Because, uh, yeah, essentially Nic Nicolas Cage manufactures diamonds, sells diamonds on to other people, yeah. like, handles those sorts of things. They're a big fancy mansion out in the middle of nowhere in America. And, yeah, some burglars come in and have been spying on him for some time and know he does the diamond stuff. And there's all sorts of revelations that come to pass, which, yeah. And essentially they just try to steal stuff from it's him. And it goes wrong. Film. <laughs> The pace was bad. You have to interrupt the plot. It's a bad film. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very rarely you admit that with a film, I must admit. <laughs> it was just so bad, it was bad. This is interesting coming from a man with Mega Shark versus Giant <laughs> Octopus in his collection. Yeah, that's, so, that's so bad, it's good. The airplane scene. But no, Mortal so... Kombat is so bad, it's good. Meg I, admittedly, I haven't seen Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, but. Yeah, uh... yeah you pass judgment. I pass judgment, of course. People pass judgment about films all the time. I know, I was just kidding. Yeah, that's alright. Uh, but yes, this film is... Um, bad. Incredibly bad. I don't quite know how to kind of explain how it's bad without giving anything away. I mean, the story... The, the pace of the film is bad. You lose interest or you just think, what's the point? Yeah, because it doesn't really do anything, does it? You get the burglars in the house interrogating and beating up Nicolas Cage and Nicole Kidman, mm. which admittedly is kind of fun, but <laughs> um, you, they don't do anything with it, because there are several revelations that come to us, aka, you know, you don't have certain things pop up, you know, you expect certain things to happen, they don't happen, so you have to kind of twist the plot into certain places, Yeah, and to be honest, I always felt that given a different director or a different writer, I think they would have done a lot better. Well, it could have been a lot better, but then it... No, sorry, that's the wrong word. It would have been a lot better. <laughs> or any, anyone, anyone else working on this film, it would have been a lot better. But if you had, like, a different... Yeah, if the scriptwriter wanted to, he could have very easily gone into torture porn. Kind of saw yeah. and hostile style stuff. Because near the end of the film, it does get there. There is a scene, and this is, really isn't ruining much, I guess, but he nails some guy's feet to the floor. Oh, yeah. Um... Literally, with a nail gun, he just goes... It just, like, fires six nails through, you know, each of his feet. And you're just thinking, that's really unnecessary. <laughs> I think they were just trying to save the film where Joel Schumacher realised what was happening. But it didn't. It did, it no. could, in any of it just brought it even even more... Because... No, it, even more down. It I was did actually, not save the film at all. No, because it brought it down <laughs> even more. Mm. But because I was thinking about giving this film, like, a four or a five... Like, because it was kind of average and it wasn't really doing much for me until that point. And then, you know, you have this guy getting his feet nailed to the floor. It's just like... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's just the choice Nicolas Cage makes towards the end of the film. Mm. I, oh, obviously, I can't mention it. Because... We can't mention what happens because it's like... <sighs> it, it, is, it is taken so much from, like, the twists and turns of, like I said, the Saw franchise and yeah. all that sort of stuff that it tries to be a lot cleverer than it actually is, and if it played itself 
like a straight robbery movie without trying to put in the backstory, put in any other kind of character development, it probably would have been quite thrilling and you could have taken it a lot further. But sadly, that didn't happen. No, no, it didn't happen. And you've got a safe director like Joel Schumacher who's just like... Safe. Well, you know, he's just, he, he knows how to direct a kind of silly film and they weren't obviously... He knows like, how to... He... It's he knows not how him. cameras it's not, work. No, it's not, it's not him that did... It's not him that did Phone Booth, is it? No. Um, it's not him that did Phone Somehow in my head I've got Joel Schumacher attached to Phone Booth. And that's not Joel Schumacher, is it? <laughs> One of Joel Schumacher's disciples. <laughs> I don't know how I, that's just popped into my head. Like, Joel Schumacher must have had some shining moments in cinema. To be... as to be well. Did he do that film Falling Down? Or Fallen Down? With um, Michael Douglas? Douglas? Maybe. I think he did that one. Uh, well, 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 we'll be on the internet straight after this then, yeah, right. just to find out what Joel Schumacher's actually done right in cinema. <laughs> but this film is really nothing to get hyped up about. Um, despite the big names attached to it, yeah, those are the only two big that. names. I don't recognise anyone else. And uh, they're all pretty ineffectual. It's so one-dimensional, the film. I mean, you've got, you know, just stereotypical, you've got drug addict, brute. Fairs. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a drag addict character, you've got a brute character, you've got the leader, and you've got some kind of one who turns. Because he's uh, been having an affair with... Yeah, you know, it's just... You just kind of see this thing coming a mile off, and it's like, oh, it's all going to end happily ever after, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much does. <laughs> Smile to the camera. Yeah. Oh, well, it does, doesn't it? It's just sort of like, know. oh, everything's going to be okay. Have, ah. a, have a group hug and everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how accurate that statement is. Um, I gave this a 4 out of 10. You were fucking generous with that, mate. I, you were generous there. I stick with the 4 out of 10. No, I stick with a 2. A solid 2 out of 10. As in, fuck this movie. <laughs> it was so bad. I was sitting there, like, bored down my mind and just like, yeah... He's going to do that, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Okay, he's done that. Yes, it was painfully predictable in yeah. parts. I just can't. I'd love to say something like putting that to one side, but there was, I can't. No, it was so kind of bland and predictable and boring. And you couldn't put anything else into it other than, you know. And just the way the daughter goes from being a rebellious teenager to suddenly, Daddy, help me! <laughs> Well, yeah, that's one of the minor points of the film. I mean, the characters are all just kind of, like, you know, interchangeable. They, they just switch their personalities at a moment's notice. Yeah. Nicolas Cage suddenly becomes, like, you know, scared businessman, like, being robbed, to interrogator and negotiator. And you're like, how did you do that? You don't have any sort of training in that sort of field. There's no, like, you know, ex-military background for Nicolas Cage in the film. Right. And he suddenly turns negotiator. And he's like, I can work with this guy. I can do this. And it's like, no, you can't. You're going to get the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> I... Come on, Nicholas Cage, Nicole Kidman, why? <laughs> M- mind you, I haven't seen anything really good with Nicole Kidman in it for a while. True. Uh, Nicholas Cage just does... He does do the random shit. But he always plays the same... Yeah, he does play. He, I mean, the latest Nicholas film Cage. he's come out. He, he ne- latest film he's come out with is Ghost Rider Two. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it yet. It's getting panned across the board. <laughs> it's getting literally panned everywhere. But you know, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Because it's I love that. Ghost I'm sure Rider. It will. Well, Ghost Ghost Rider One. That was a good film. It was a good film. It was a lot of fun, though, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, number two. It well, looks to be bigger. But that's than another that. show. Yeah. That's but, another show, probably like half half a year down the line, I guess, yeah. Putting Trespass to one side. Oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> this brings us on to the trailers. Yeah, the first trailer we kick off with is Natural Selection, which you picked. I'm quite surprised you picked this one. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like one we uh, were going to review. Basically, a woman's dying husband, she tries to go and search for his son. Oh. It's not her, she didn't produce him. Um, it's... Uh, so yeah, had another marriage. Yeah, and she's infertile, as whether to believe in the trailer. Yeah. You know, she, she can't have children with this guy, although she might want to. And so she goes to try and reunite the son with his father, 
and has a family unit, it seems, and obviously problems arise. Well, yeah, I mean... Because the son is a bit of a bastard. <laughs> it looks like an average trailer, you know, uh, some drama, a pinch of humour thrown in. <sighs> very looks... little. Oh, there were some. Yeah, there, was very, there was some, but as I said, very little. It looks more like a drama than, you know, kind of... I wonder if it'll have a mega happy ending, the group hug. <laughs> oh, maybe. You never know with a group hug. <laughs> it, can, it can strike at any minute. <laughs> You least expect it. It's like, no, yeah, no, group hug, no, I don't want it. <laughs> Moving on to the next trailer. Oh, yeah, well, there wasn't really much to say about that, was there? What, badass? <laughs> no, natural selection. Oh, natural selection. No, it, it's just pretty it's, self It's going to be hit really. or miss. I, I I'm think curious about miss. it, so I'll probably end up watching it when it comes out. Hopefully, it'll be better than Trespass. Oh, anything. There's lots of things that could be better than Trespass. There might be some evil director out there listening to us right now. <laughs> you know, Uwe Boll. <laughs> Have you seen any Uwe Boll films? <laughs> oh, my God. I've, we, we might have to do, like, a season when we change the show around yeah. and do that. An Uwe Boll season. I did write him down on the list of directors we were going to do, and I, I put, like, Boll. I was like, question mark, question mark, question mark. Is like, it B-movies he does? <sighs> What's he done? He's like, The House of the Dead, like... Um, Oh my God, House of the Dead. Dungeons and Dragons in the Name of the King with Jason Statham. He is literally, he's credited as the worst movie director ever, ever. Yeah. Just like ever in the history of time, he is the worst movie director. I can't remember who the director of Troll 2 was, but if he can do something if, worse yeah, than if Troll 2. If he can 2. top Troll 2, then I will be thoroughly impressed. Um, but yes, moving on to our next trailer. We tried to do this a minute, minute ago. Uh, what was it? Badass. Basically, you've got Danny Trejo back as someone who's just... Danny Trejo, like the god of men. Uh, <laughs> machete. Yeah, he's machete, and he's even machete in Spy Kids, which yeah. I pointed out to you a few weeks ago. That was awesome. If you look, watch Spy Kids again, you'll notice that Danny Trejo is in it, obviously, mm. and he plays a character called Machete. Now, Robert Rodriguez made Spy Kids. He made Machete. That's not right <laughs> on any level. Well, you know... Nothing like a bit of variety. No, it's not. It's just the, the, the thing that that guy has done in Machete, and now you put it into a family kids film. <laughs> I just haven't seen a Machete of guys lying on, on the floor. Please, Father, grant me mercy. God has mercy. I don't. <clears throat> but Badass. Yeah, Badass, he plays like a, what, 60, 70 year old, like a senior citizen, retired guy, and he just. I don't takes know the what... into his own hands, basically. He's got... It seems that way, doesn't he, it? The trailer, you see him having happy memories, then suddenly it just cuts back to the present. Oh, yeah, he's like, he beats up some guys on a bus. He's like, you know... I don't know how, what, why they start on him, but he just beats up some guys on a bus. He's like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. And he beats the shit out of them, and he goes, yeah. I told you I didn't want to fight. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's gonna be fun. I, yeah, I, I want to watch this one when it yeah, comes out. This will this will be a definite kind of like top film to rent when we get it. <laughs> Whenever we get a chance to get our hands on it, it's gonna be like the priority watch. I think we might have a fight over it. That'll be funny. Fight over it. Well, which one of us gets to watch it first? Because we split the films, don't we? We won't fight over it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this brings us on to the next trailer. Next trailer. Oh, what is that? Intruders. Oh, intruders. Oh, intruders. Basically, you've got some schoolgirl making up a story about um, a hollow face man, but then for some mm. reason the hollow face man comes real. Yeah, he come. He, the story she's telling comes alive mm. and starts attacking her family. Mm. Attacks her brother, attacks her father, and attacks her as well. The in, mo, the thing that kind of connects me to this film the mo, most is it's from the guy who did Twenty Eight Weeks Later. Oh yeah. And that was a good film. Have you seen that? It wasn't as good as Twenty Eight Days, but it was mm -hmm. still a good film. No, it was. It was still a very good film. I mean, the best scene in it is the scene in the subway. Yeah. Where they have the night vision camera, in the subway station. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the scene that's directed by Danny Boyle, who did the first one. <laughs> but uh, even so, the film on its on on its own as Twenty Eight Weeks Later is a good one, and I still want them to make Twenty Eight Months Later. I kind of don't. Twenty. But they left it open for the sequel, didn't they? Well, yeah, because everywhere around the world was. Infected. Well, yeah, the last shot of the film is them running into Paris, yeah. like zombies or whatever you want to call them. I, they're not zombies, in my opinion. 
but that's beside the point. But they run into Paris, don't they? Tell me. Tell what do the zombies what, what, mean to you? Dead. Yeah. No one in 28 Days Later is dead, are oh, they? No, they're just... Um, they're not dead, are they? Dr- well, not drugged up, they're just... No, they they essentially because you have that scene in the first twenty eight days later yeah. where you have uh, was it what's I'll his name the monkey, not the monkey. You have that guy the the scene in the the kind of abandoned car factory and you have this like this raven that drops a spot of blood into this guy's uh, eye. Yeah, he doesn't die. He just goes. He in just, he, yeah. He um he I think it's Brendan Gleeson. I yeah. think it's Brendan Gleeson because he gets a drop of blood in his eye and then he turns into one of the infected. Mm. Therefore, he does not die and then become a zombie or you know become infected. So therefore, he is not a zombie. They are not zombies in Twenty Eight Days Later. But that's beside the point. We're <laughs> completely <laughs> sidetracked. <too> far. <laughs> but that is the oh that pissed me off about that film. Anyway, no, but coming back to was it Intruders? Intruders, yes. Um, yes. Hollow Man, uh, but Hollow. The ho- yeah, it is Hollow Man. <laughs> yeah. Hollow Face is what they call him. There were some images in the trailer that looked like it could be quite a scary kind of film, like this girl's mouth like closing up, Matrix style, and you know, face being erased and everything. It could be. This is another hit or miss. With horror, it's so hard to get it right. True. It is so hard to get horror right these what days. The film we saw a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it had um, Jim Robinson from Vapors in it. Don't be afraid of the dark. Yeah, that was awful. That film. It was not awful. That was actually very good. I and I stand by that. If you want to see a good horror film of the past few years, don't be afraid of the dark. Would no, probably it's, be. It's just got funny when Jim Robinson came into it. I got thinking, yes, Jim's back. <laughs> Sorry, Alan Dale. Yeah. But, anyway, badass. Good. Was it badass? No, we were talking about Intruders. 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 Looks interesting. I'll probably watch it when it comes out, even though it's got like you know Clive Owen and everything like that in it. Just... I'll see how it goes. How I feel at the time. Yeah. Uh, we've got two more trailers now. Uh, the next one is Good for Nothing. Uh, Western. Every scene, every 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 screenshot is basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's a bit it's a bit weird, and the you can't help but notice the quotes that come up across from critics and everything. And there was one quote that dominated it. Was like it was um, a kind of Kiwi imagined Western, filtered through like offbeat comedy, yeah, and then put through Sam Raimi and Coen Brothers. And I was just like, ah, it sounds interesting, but now that you've put Sam Raimi and Coen Brothers and you know yeah. all these other influences in my head, <clears throat> I'll just be thinking of those. When watching the film, oh, I see this. Yeah, the crowd. Yeah, there. you just be like, you know, okay, is this Sam Raimi? Is this the Coen Brothers? Are they trying to mimic it, or are they doing something completely different? And it will be one of those things where you're just like, eh, it's not actually a good film on its own. It's just marred by these people's influences. It was an average trailer. It was. Yeah, <laughs> you just ignore all that. <laughs> yeah, it was average. I'll wait and see when it comes mm, out. Yeah, it didn't really kind of give too much away. I thought I was still confused about what it was actually going to be about, like uh, some Lone Ranger kind of thing. I mean, it was good in terms of it didn't give too much away about the story, but then it's a western, so you pretty much already worked it out from the start. Mm. You know, I guess the Lone so. Gunman, no one likes yeah. him, so the man, the man with no down. name. It's, it's the classic, yeah. you know, Clint Eastwood, the man with no name, that sort of stuff, which is also something we've got to do in our new show, Clint Eastwood season. Yeah. Anyone would be a yeah exactly a Clint Eastwood season. You've got the spaghetti oh, Dirty Western. Harry, Dirty Harry. I bought I bought my dad Dirty Harry for blue, on Blu-ray the other week. Such a good film. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but yeah, cl- putting that to one side. Our last trailer, we got really distracted with all of these. <laughs> our last trailer is the is it the only documentary to feature this week? I forgot. Um, no, um, in the last show. We had no, Bully. no, it's one of two. Yeah, we had Bully, didn't we, in the last one. Uh, and this one we got Unraveled. I didn't like this one because you really? basically got a con man who's. This documentary, was it the last 60 days? Of his house. He was under house arrest for a long time, it seems. And the last 60 days of his house arrest, they filmed him. Yeah, they essentially thing. just let a film crew in, and he's making, he's still making money off it. And I didn't like it because he just kept saying to the camera, "Oh, I, I don't know if I should have done what I did." And I kept waiting for him to say, 
But you know what? I'm making some money off this film, so I'm glad. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the way he was portraying it in the trailer seemed like everyone has the temptation to do what he did. Yeah, he was, he was everyone playing for sympathy, has... He was playing for the sympathy, though. Well, he wasn't, because... Well, in he my was. opinion, he wasn't, because he said, like, I did it, I don't... I don't like what I did. I wouldn't do it again, probably, but, you know... It's a bit it's... now. Yeah, I know, it's a bit late now, and he's going to prison for... <laughs> the American government recommended he should go to prison for, what, 145 years? <laughs> um, that was a little harsh, I imagine. I don't know exactly how he defrauded everyone. I mean, it explained it all in the trailer, but mm. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> um, and it was all very, like him trying to explain what he did and he's still he's got sons he's got like a family and everything but they still seem to kind of operate as a family unit um, yeah well they're still making money off him I might be being a bit too cynical here but maybe yeah. <laughs> um, I don't yeah I know he's probably he's probably guilty of, he is obviously guilty, he's guilty of what he's done so he's a bad man but he's not trying to justify what he's done. He obviously, you know... He's playing the sympathy, though. He's not like the guy in Tower Heist, where he's just like, oh, I tried to play play, play, play innocent, but I'm really guilty. Yeah. He knows he's done bad. He mm. knows he's guilty. So he's just, you know, telling it all. And I, th- I, I'm, I want to seek this out and kind of watch it when it's released and when it's on DVD. I, I'm not in a rush to see it. It just... This looks like some fraudster... Boo-hoo, I got caught. Oh, but I can make some money if I sell my story. And it's just, the thing is, he was saying, like, you know, most people in the situation, they, in, like, kind of criminal situations, like, they either don't do it if they are no. too afraid to do it or they know they'll get caught. Yeah. They're too afraid they'll get... And he was like, I didn't know that. I didn't know if I would get caught. I didn't know if I would, you know, if, no, I, if playing, I was too afraid to... I just kind of like, yeah. He's playing the sympathy vote. Well, he hooked me in then. He hooked me in if he's playing that sympathy vote. Um, and I'll probably end up watching it. So that ends our trailers. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly mixed punch. Yeah. <clears throat> Bring this on to the last film. Yes, yeah, probably. Actually, no, it's not my favourite film of the week. I would say Tower Heist was probably my favourite film. Although this runs a very, very, very close second. I think this is my film of the week. Really? Okay, it's a machine gun preacher which I've been talking to my friends about at work for a while, hmm. um, because they were talking about this um, Facebook operation to uh, kind of destabilise Kony. Hmm. Um, I don't, you've probably, if anyone's watching this, you've probably seen the things on Facebook saying, like, you know, Kony 2012, the videos that popped up. Uh, but Machine Gun Preacher is the story of Sam Childers. Sam Childers, a former drug-dealing biker who finds God and basically became a crusader for, for the children in Sudan. Yeah, he builds like a... Well, he goes to Uganda, first of all, to build like a... Like, just with his building company. Yeah. To, like, rebuild some houses and stuff like that. And he uh, gets interested in what's happening in Sudan. And goes up to Sudan and gets so influenced by what's happening over there. Like, you know, so kind of wrapped up in the terror that's going on over there. There are some pretty powerful scenes in this film. They are. And he, and he decides to build an orphanage for the children. Um, and he decides to just, like, fight Coney his own way and just, like, you know, save children and make them happy again. Yeah. It is a fucking powerful film. It's a very I, good film. Uh, there were, I was kind of gobsmacked at the screen by what I was kind of seeing. I mean, you have this... You know, there are scenes where, like, children are getting, like, kind of mutilated essentially yep. um, just you know there's horrible things happening and it, overall I mean, it was a good film the, the pace of the film was good I, I didn't lose interest it was mm. good editing a good story good background music good acting yeah I mean Jack Butler has put in his, his finest performance I've ever seen yeah. I don't know any other film he's done that I've seen that's kind of tested his emotional range essentially I mean, he goes from more like drug addict, alcoholic, to so suddenly really believing in God, like believing God, and but I like the kind of he passion uses... he yeah. puts through in it. When you see these like these sermons he's putting to yeah. like his like, he essentially sets up a church for sinners, hmm. people who are like drug addicts, alcoholics, and you know abusers in that sort of way. He puts up a church for that sort of person, and the sermons he gives to those people are just like you know. 
oh shit you know, when he does those scenes it's like yeah. whoa okay that's He's really kind of good uh, yeah um, and the actual film itself yeah it's very very well done I gave it a 7 out of 10 and I gave it an 8 8 out of 10 the two best films of the week Tower Heist and Machine Gun Preacher I think in terms of just general entertainment you want to go for Tower Heist because this is more of a serious film. It, this it is a does, serious, this a, is a film that makes you think. Tower Heist, it, it's yeah. a fun film. It's a fun family film. But this one, it, it just leaves you thinking, sorry. basically. Yeah, yeah, it makes you... It, it's addressing a serious issue. I mean, this mm. is a real-life issue. And we do joke about these films, like, inspired by true stories. And this actually is a true yeah, for story. Once, it's, it's a film that is inspired by, by a true story. It's not just a case of someone walked down that street inspired yeah. by true events. Uh, but yeah, this because at the end of the film, when you watch the credits, you see like the footage, like kind of video footage of Sam Childers, the actual Sam Childers, yeah. like doing what he does in Sudan and Uganda, and it's quite inspiring stuff. And there's that quote at the end of the film he gives. Did you watch like to the end of the film where he gave that quote? He was like. He was no. just speaking interview. He was just doing an interview with someone. And he said, um, "If someone kidnaps your child or your family member or anyone you love or know, mm. and you ask me to get them back, would you mind how I get them back?" And did you yeah. did you not see that? I didn't see that. You, you really turn off early in the credits. There's like that whole thing that you, you see all this footage of him. Man. I was only really late for work. That day. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's brilliant. Um, no, you got to search that up because he just says, like, you know, if I was tasked with getting your loved one back, mm. with getting who you cared about back, would you care how I did it? And that's essentially the question he asks. He says, would you care how I did it? That's pretty powerful. And I was just like, no, I wouldn't care, to be honest. You, you get them, you know, if there's evil people back. in the way, you know. And Coney is portrayed as a very very evil person <laughs> bad person yeah and he uh, yeah, I'm surprised that this film hasn't received kind of more credit more credit uh, yeah I mean the quotes on the like you know the DVD cover you expect like you know oh there's always going to be quotes like that well no but you, you take a like in designing a DVD cover mm. you have like the films like Machine Gun Preacher with have it had like what three, co three quotes on the entirety of it and you take a film like Warrior no one's ever heard of Warrior before it came out. And there's like 50,000 quotes, like five stars, yeah. you know, this is inspiring and everything. And Machine Gun Preacher, which deals with actual issues and yeah, deals with actual, issues. you know, actual events that are going on in the world. It gets like Loaded Magazine gives it four stars. Nuts Magazine gives it five stars. <laughs> FHM on the back says it's inspiring and one of the best films of the year. And it's like, really? <laughs> like, you know... Is this is this how we're living like right now? <laughs> you know, people go to the cinema. Most I think most of the time they don't want to see stuff based on events. They just want to go be enjoyed. You know, the film they watch. But yeah, fiction. but a I mean, film I'm only like, guessing that's what it's like. Uh, the modern audience is uh, kind of more entertain more entertained by special effects and you know. No, no, I don't. I think that's what um, the Hollywood thinks. Mm. But I don't think audiences are just entertained. I mean, we, see, we saw that um, we saw that trailer for Wrath of the Titans. Yeah, which was just a massive CGI fest. And I think Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace oh. confirms that people don't live. Us don't just <laughs> don't live. They don't. <laughs> don't <laughs> people just don't live for the special effects. They want a decent story. Oh no, no, that was that was an awful film. But yeah, Machine Gun Preacher kind of. It's, it was it's good. proving it was... that you can make a good film out of real events. Yeah, you know it. It was an inspiring film, but at the same time, it made you, it made me stop and think. Yeah, you know, uh, it kind of it, it did actually make me kind of research a little bit about Coney and what's going on over there. I mean, you know, if you do it right, you can actually kind of care about. You can make the yeah. audience care about what's going on over there. And for that respect, I give it solid eight out of ten. You know, top notch stuff, really. It's not. It's not respect of Wally. <laughs> it wasn't Fright Night, but I'll <laughs> oh, fuck off with Fright Night. 
Oh, that's just a. T- oh, sorry about this. Um, this brings us to the yes, end of the show. Yes, it does bring us to the end <laughs> of the show. Thank you for watching. Yeah, well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate every single view we get. So, yeah. Take care, guys. Thank you very much. See you later. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Fight night.